Hey there, you beautiful human. I hope that you are doing well. Today we are gonna be talking about the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I got mine about a week ago now and I've been using it every single day as my phone, camera, and even as a filmmaking camera. This year I went with the Pro Max, which is kind of funny because my previous phone was actually the iPhone 13 mini, so this was a pretty drastic jump in size for me. But honestly, it feels really great. The uh, new material that they're using this year, the titanium, actually does feel light. It doesn't feel lighter than my 13 mini, obviously, but when I've held the iPhone 14 Pro Max and this phone in my hand, there is like, a slightly like noticeable difference. This year they decided to go with this titanium material around the phone and throughout the phone, I guess. And supposedly it makes it lighter and stronger. I'm not really sure how true that is. I did see Jerry Riggs Everything's video where he kind of just snapped the phone in half. I'm not really planning on attempting to snap my phone in half anytime soon, and I'm actually rocking a case anyways, so I don't know. We'll see what happens. Also this year they decided to include the USB-C at the bottom of the phone, which to me is really awesome. It allows me to use uh, my SSD cards, I can plug an SD card straight into my phone, I got less cables that I have to worry about now. It is sort of funny though, the other day I got into my fiance's car to drive somewhere and I went to plug my phone into her car and she's still using a lightning cable. So in that moment, I actually wasn't able to plug my phone in. And I think this is something that's gonna take a little bit of time to sort of get phased out. You're gonna see the lightning cable sort of disappear and more and more people using USB-C, which is a good thing. USB-C is a good thing. Because the phone has USB-C, I can now actually plug a SD card directly into the phone and record directly to the SD card, which is great for me, somebody who creates a lot of videos and films a lot of content, being able to film directly to an SD card is sort of a game changer, especially one that you can sort of just carry in your pocket, plug directly into your phone and record hours and hours of log footage. As somebody that works in video and films a lot of content on their phone, the ability to record directly in a log profile from the iPhone is pretty huge iPhones have always been really good at shooting video. The only issue is they tend to be a bit oversaturated and over sharpened. So now with the ability to shoot in log, especially directly to an SSD at 4K 60 is really great. Um, log essentially allows you to film in a very desaturated uh, color profile so that when you finish recording, you can basically unplug your SSD, plug it into your computer, pull it into your editing software, and that color profile allows you to really mess with the highlights, the exposure, shadows, color, and sort of gives you the creative freedom to make the footage look the way that you want it to. Shooting video on the iPhone is something that I'm really excited to continue to experiment with over the next couple weeks especially with the log profile. Um, I have a few ideas for some videos I wanna make, even a short film that I wanna create using only the iPhone to really push its limits, see what we can do with the footage and really test out even the stabilization in the phone. The cameras this year, the stabilization has gotten pretty insane to the point where I, um, I don't know that you really need a gimbal anymore. Okay, so taking photos on this thing is something that I really wanna talk about. Um, I'm somebody who shoots a lot of photos, but I particularly shoot either using my Sony camera that I'm using to film right now or my Fujifilm X-E2, um, which I pretty much use as my full-time travel camera. I take everywhere with me and capture photos, yada, yada, yada. But what excites me this year about the iPhone is I feel like it's so close to a place where I don't have to take an actual camera with me everywhere I go. Like, 
in the past, you know, I bought the, I think iPhone X um, at a time that I didn't really have any other camera except maybe like a Canon T7 or something. And I got rid of the Canon because I was like, okay, I can shoot everything on my iPhone. And it worked, but it also didn't work. Like it just wasn't there yet. Like I wasn't completely happy with the photos just yet, but we're getting so close to it now, especially with this iPhone 15 Pro Max, you know, being able to shoot 48 megapixel images raw and just pull them straight into Lightroom. You know, obviously I do my own adjustments and edits to them to sort of get them to look the way that I really want them to. But man, like for the most part, they look really good, like straight out of camera. I mean, you know, if I took a photo right now uh, on my iPhone and took a photo on my Sony a7 III, like, it's pretty hard to tell the difference unless you like really pixel peep. Um, you know, there are, there's like certain like sharpening and like certain things that are more in focus than others. I think where the iPhone sort of falls apart when it comes to photo is just like depth of field type stuff. You know, like if I'm taking a portrait of somebody and I'm trying to get like a 1.8, you know, aperture where the background has like a nice bokeh, like, you know, there it sort of falls apart. It doesn't look as good as like a professional camera, but being able to take this thing around and just use it as like a point and shoot camera, you know, for like street photography or capturing my everyday life. Like this thing's gotten pretty damn good, honestly. The action button's really exciting to me because I actually have it mapped to my camera. And so, you know, when my phone's in my pocket and I know I have to take a photo, just being able to press that action button in my pocket, by the time I pull it out of my pocket, it's already ready to go and ready to take a photo, just like that. And I don't know, I really like the action button. I think the action button's dope. You know, as more time goes on, I'm gonna get some more time in with these cameras. You know, I've, I've sort of used all of the focal modes, the 0.5, the 1X, the 2X, and the 5X on this thing is actually really great. I don't know, like I wasn't, I didn't buy the phone thinking like, oh man, I'm gonna use that 5X, but now that I've used it a couple times, it's actually really good, like weirdly good. The other day I was in the backyard with my dog and he was maybe, I don't know, like 30 feet away from me laying down and I just popped on the 5X camera. I was, you know, sitting in a chair far away, snapped a quick photo of him. And I was actually really surprised at how good it looked, but then also like the fact that it came from a phone. For me as, you know, someone who really enjoys taking photos and making videos, the camera is really important. And this is the best camera that Apple offers. So I've really been enjoying it. I'm gonna continue to test it over the next couple weeks and make a few more videos about it. Um, if you wanna see any of the photos that I take, um, please follow me on Instagram. I'm gonna be posting all of those there if you wanna check them out. So I don't know, I, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with the camera so far. Um, mostly, mostly the video that I've captured so far, like video just looks really great. I'm gonna continue to like take photos and sort of compare it to, um, you know, my professional cameras and, you know, see if this is potentially a phone that will replace my Fuji is like my everyday travel camera. You know, next week I'm I'm going on a trip to Austin and I'm planning on only taking my phone. Um, and I sort of want to see what that's like, you know, using this as my only device to take photos. I'm leaving my Fuji film here as much as I don't want to, but uh, I'm challenging myself to only take this, only take photos on this, only take videos on this and see what sort of results I get. And uh, I'll be making a video about that. So if that interests you, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss when that one gets posted. I guess the other thing that we should talk about is uh, battery life. And this has sort of been a pretty hot topic for the phone right now, especially with all the like overheating, everybody claiming that their iPhones are like literally on fire out of the box. 
And, uh, you know, I gotta say, it, it's weird. A lot of the stuff that I've seen online with like the phones being really fragile, the phones overheating, the battery life being bad, like these are all things that I personally haven't really experienced. This doesn't mean that it's not happening to people, but it also doesn't mean that it's happening to everybody. So, you know, when I got this phone, I took it out of the box, I set it up, and during the setup, you know, when it was downloading iOS 17, um, when it was transferring everything from my iPhone mini to this phone, like, it got warm. Like, it was warm to the touch, but it wasn't hot. And, you know, I may be kind of the wrong person to ask about this because I actually live in Texas and, you know, 100 degrees is kind of like room temperature here. So seeing people, you know, point the like temperature gun at their phone and get readings of like 108 degrees, like, I don't know, maybe that is hot. I'm not really sure. Like it gets 108 degrees, like on average here. So I don't know. It's weird. Like I haven't experienced the, the like overheating thing that everybody seems to be experiencing for some reason. And maybe it's because I have this like case on my phone and I don't really feel heat that often, but I mean, I'm somebody that's like taking photos on my phone, recording footage and log, editing the photos, hopping over to Instagram, posting them, replying to text, like all of those things. And I've never felt like my phone was getting hot. So I don't know, again, I'm not saying that it isn't happening to people, it's just, it honestly hasn't been happening to me, so we'll see. Now, when it comes to battery life, battery life's kind of interesting because I had the iPhone 13 mini before this. And with the iPhone 13 mini, like obviously because it's a smaller phone, it has a smaller battery size. So obviously it gets less battery life. With the iPhone mini, I was pretty much making it like most of the day. But then in the evening, there were some times when I had to like throw my phone on the charger if I had like used it a lot that day. With the iPhone, 15 Pro Max, I mean, I'm I'm getting up 8 a.m., 9 a.m., start using the phone, and I mean, last night, I didn't go to bed until maybe 1 a.m., and I still had 10% left, and that's after a day of using it to take photos, using it to record video, like, on social media. I even went, uh, I even drove, like, an hour away, so I used Google Maps, like, listen to music on Spotify. I'm doing all these things on my phone, I think at the end of the day, I had like almost a six hour screen time and I still had 10% battery left. I don't know, to me, that's really good battery. Like that lasted me all day. I felt like I was on my phone plenty. I feel like if you're going over six hours of screen time, then maybe your phone's doing you a favor by shutting off anyways. I don't know, like that feels like a long time to be on your phone, but I don't know, battery life's been pretty good to me. I may be, again, the wrong person to ask because I came from the 13 mini, so like, I don't know, it's good. So I'm gonna have to say though, overall, my thoughts of the iPhone 15 Pro Max is, it's pretty good. I like it so far quite a bit. Okay. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have the iPhone 15, uh, let me know what you think about it in the comments. Let me know if you have any questions. If there's anything I forgot to talk about, just uh, just ask. And um, yeah, thank you so much for being here. I'll see you in the next one.